Lighthouse Nightmare, a panel of international scientists and military officials announced Operation Storm Destroyer, a new plan to weaken the superstorms ravaging the globe. So, are we really able to change the weather? We have tried before with some success. Operation Storm Fury. Project Popeye. For nearly 20 years, the U.S. government ran a program called Project Storm Fury. Their mission was to weaken supercell storms by seeding them with chemicals. And they found out they could create them as well. In theory, we can weaken a storm by selectively seeding it with silver iodide. Silver iodide particles are hydroscopic. That means they attract water. So when silver iodide particles are dropped into a rain cloud, they draw the water to them, forming raindrops. As rain falls out of the cloud, the storm weakens. And they can do the opposite. So if a quick succession of storms begin to ravage the planet, nations with experience in seeding may come together to fight back. We have scheduled about 30 minutes for this press conference. With the eventual impacts of the current environment yet unclear, maintain spacing interval 90 seconds, and the constant threat of natural disaster, approaching minimums, and America stands ready as a partner to provide stability for all. Okay, get it. Tonight featuring Coast to Coast AM from the 17th of March, 1999. Here's William Thomas again. William, I've got two things I want to read you very quickly, then we'll go back to the phones. Okay. William mentioned intestinal problems. This is from Don in California. I'm a healthy, active male, 33 years old, just after Christmas. I developed intestinal pain and flu-like symptoms, no fever, but very tired. The symptoms would come and go every few days. It lasted until late February. I remember telling friends, this is the weirdest flu I've ever had. Just when you're normal, it hits you again. Then about a week before I got sick, I noticed a sticky film on my vehicles, plural, in the morning. At that time, I told a friend of mine how I'd wash the car, and then it'd be all dirty again the next morning with this damn oily film. It's now beginning to make sense to me, Don in California. Sound about right? Sounds about right. I just sigh when I hear that story, because I've heard others like it and we seem to be going from upper respiratory to gastrointestinal with this stuff yeah and this uh art listening to mr thomas talk tonight he mentioned meningitis this big warning at the top of the facts it says art here in northeast ohio this is from dale in akron mm -hmm. in the last two months we've had four cases of meningitis none of the people ever had contact with any of the others two hospitalized two died mm -hmm. one a four-year-old one child and the other a 27-year-old female teacher. It all happened within five weeks. And we've got contrails here all the time. Possibly a connection? I do have reports from Akron on contrails. And I would ask uh, listeners to please participate in this very important investigation for all of us by sending me uh, news clippings of these meningitis outbreaks and similar outbreaks of disease. Uh, you'll find my address on my website. All right. Um, and again, uh, if you want to email, if you're in the media, you want to follow up on the story, you damn well ought to want to follow up on the story. Uh, it's Wilco, W-I-L-C-O, at islandnet.com. One word, islandnet.com. Um, and, and you'll be able to email uh, William directly. His website is linked to my website. It's got tildes and stuff in it, so if that's hard for you, go to the website you're used to, mine, and just scroll down to William Thomas's name and click on the link. You can do more reading. His book is Bringing the War Home, and you can get it by calling one 690 
All right. Um, first time... No, uh, no, I shouldn't be going there yet. Let's go here. East of the Rockies, you're on the air with William Thomas. Where are you, please? Hi there. Uh, this is Marty, and I'm listening in uh, Brooklyn, New York on 770 WABC. WABC, yes, sir. And uh, I have a comment and a question for William. Sure. Um, my first, uh, first a comment, and it has something to do with the story that Art said at the, just after the break, because two years ago I was down in Tampa, Florida, and uh, in the morning, I left with my cousin to go, go get cigarettes, and the, the car was covered with dust, it looked like. Dust? And, uh, yeah, it was a, uh, it's the best way I can explain it, as if it, somebody was sawing wood around it, but it was everywhere, even. And I asked him, uh, asked him what it was, what is this? And uh, he complained, and he moaned, and he said, well, sometimes the planes come over, and they dust for potato bugs, he said. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, that, you know, I just, I was, okay, I figured he knows, you know, and he complained that it, it would leave spots on his car, and uh, they wouldn't tell anybody when they were doing this. They would just do it randomly. And I thought if they are doing that, if it is, you know, just innocently uh, spraying for bugs, uh, I, I know that, William, that you're trying to get information out, and I appreciate that. And I think uh, I, I applaud you for doing it, but I think some people might be getting terrified unduly. And that brings me to my question. No, that is right. I mean, uh, how the hell is somebody supposed to know the difference between contrails and chemtrails? That's my question. And, and Yeah, and I understand that this is going to cause great worry. It's worrying me. Um, so, yeah, to you, um, William, again, I guess that we were talking about that a little while ago. God, how do we help people understand what they should be concerned about and what's okay? Uh, life in this country is getting tougher by the minute. I agree. And again, I really don't want to be a purveyor of fear. I hope I can be a messenger for uh, awareness and public action toward uh, their elected officials and toward the, the media to instigate an investigation, demand some answers and accountability. Uh, we have enough stress in our lives already. There are plenty of crop dusters flying around spraying for various things. By the way, you don't want to be exposed to that spray any more than anything else. That's uh, very nasty, those pesticides. In fact, as we found tonight, um, some of these pesticide uh, elements or substances or compounds are being found uh, in Joe Burton's body, so we don't want to be exposed to that, nor do we want to run from every aircraft and every uh, normal legitimate contrail that we see. But if the contrails linger, or especially if they are being uh, dispensed behind an aircraft at a fairly low altitude, that is an aircraft, a, a big a big jet airplane that is not high and hard to see in the sky, but pretty much right up close and personal. Uh, beware, there is no possible way contrails can form from a jet aircraft uh, at nine or 10,000 feet. That is a very good indicator that something's going on. An X pattern in the sky is also another sure uh, mark of this particular beast. And you've had eyewitnesses say, through telescopes and binoculars, they have actually seen this stuff coming out nozzles. Absolutely correct. People viewing uh, these aircraft with uh, high-power binoculars and telescopes have independently told me that they have seen the, the probe, the big boom, uh, coming angling down from the rear of the aircraft. Again, we're seeing these chemtrails uh, coming from the tails of identified tanker aircraft with engines on their wings. Here is a fax from a physician who I will not name. Art, whether these are epidemiologic studies of an offensive or defensive nature and or related to electromagnetic experimentation and or question mark, this is not good news.